Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another great edition of my groom show. And for the groom show today, we got a very great guest. Excuse me. And he, he's an actor, and he is in the Arrowverse. And I'm talking about Hawkman himself, part of the D, the DC world. And he's starring in a movie called Night and Day that also stars Cameron Diaz and Tom Cruise. So we're going to talk to him all about that movie, all about the Arrowverse and DC and Hawkman. It's going to be a very fun time, very fun interview. So stay tuned. And his name is Hawk Hens Henschel. And if I said your name wrong, I apologize. I'll have you say it when you come on. I am Rocco Cross. I am the host at Stutters. I am the host of the Guru Room. And my interview with Falk will be coming up very soon. This is my Guru Room. And welcome to my nightmare. Stay tuned. Okay, um. Welcome to Gru, and thank and thanks so so much for taking time out of your night and coming on. Thanks for having me, Rocco. Where are you located? Where are you at? Philadelphia. Philadelphia, nice. Yeah, East Coast. <laughs> I just spoke it's to actually a, a bunch really of warm Massachusetts folks on the last one. So, oh, really? We're staying in the in the region. <laughs> I love the vibe. <laughs> I love the accent. It's. I really want to explore the East Coast more. It's it's very close to like uh, you know the European vibe as far as like climate goes and, and oh. uh, culture, I think a lot of it is similar. Oh, wow. Have, have you ever been to like Philly or Never new, Philly. new York? And cause new York, New York is close to Philadelphia. New York. I have done Boston. I've done. Okay. Um, what else in the, on the East coast? Actually, I think that's probably it. Jersey. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah Jer Jersey and New New York are relatively close to to yeah. here to fill to Philadelphia. <laughs> nice. So, um, I firstly I wanted to ask you before we even get in into the, your film, I I I saw something I didn't know about you. Like you were a backup dancer. Yeah, yeah, that's how and, it started. And you worked for like Mariah Carey and Britney Spears and a lot of good artists. Yeah, I mean, let's let's set the record straight on that because press always likes to like mention that out of context. I I worked once for Mariah, and there was a live event in a club in London. Oh wow! Uh, freestyling on stage, and then the Britney one actually, I did two music videos, also as sort of you know backup dancer. Wow. So I didn't go on tour with them or I didn't, you know, I wasn't one of their main dancers, but yeah, we, I, I worked, I worked with them a couple of times. And then my main sort of bigger stuff was, uh, you know, touring with artists, choreographing for artists, a lot in Canada, a lot in Taiwan. Um, and uh, yeah, like live performances, like the Latin Grammy awards. Yeah. Um, music videos. That was sort of my bread and butter for, for a good decade. Wow. Okay. That's, that's, that's really, that, that's really cool. I like that. <laughs> nice. <Thanks, right. laughs> and how did you wind up getting in, in involved with the, with the film night, night, night and day? Night and day came about, well, I, I moved to LA after um, I had a dance career in London for a while. Um, uh, I did a, a dance for a support act for justin timberlake's first solo tour justified oh, met, wow. all, met all the people there that were from la the choreographers dancers and they said why don't you try out la you know um i moved and then in la acting was everywhere and i started pursuing my original dream of becoming an actor and then uh it was many years of just dry spell no i couldn't get an agent i couldn't get a, a job i couldn't get a student film like nothing was happening at all wow. um and then I produced a short film that then became my demo reel. And that demo reel got me finally a manager who got me an agent who got me the audition for Night and Day in 2008, I believe, um, or nine, one of those two. And yeah, and then it was, that was my first big film. It was like from nothing. I've done like small shows. I did Arrested Development, uh, a smaller part, and I did a 
show called Journeyman that had two seasons, but very small things. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, it went from that to, you know, $160 million film with Tom Cruise. <laughs> Cameron Diaz. Wow. Wow. Uh, that's really, that's really it was, impressive. It was quite the jump. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Sorry. Excuse my language. You can beep it out. I know it's okay. You can, you can curse on, right. on here. I, I'm, I, you know, I don't, I, they say that people that curse a lot are honest. So I'll take that. <laughs> I might curse, but I'm, I'm honest. You guys. Okay. There you go. <laughs> and in that film, you, you play a villain. And, and I wanted to ask, to ask you like, what, what do you think makes a good villain? I mean, that they're fun and that they're formidable. You know, they got to be, there's nothing worse than a villain that you like think the main guy can just kind of like push over. Like I sometimes feel that about, you know, with the big guys, you got the rock. I'm always like, how are they yes. casting? How are they going to cast the villain for this dude? You know, like, they, <laughs> like you need, you need, you need a six. <laughs> That's why Tom Cruise and Sly and all those guys, it was great because they could face these six foot four massive opponents and you were really worried for them, right? You yes, were like, yeah, I don't sure. think Tom is going to survive this. Like, this isn't going to go well. Um, so, yeah, they got to be a formidable opponent. I think in a perfect case scenario, they got to be relatable to a point. You know, you got to kind of see like, oh, I see why they're this way. They're going about it fucked up and and not the right way but i like that when you have a little bit of empathy there uh or understanding at least yeah um yeah and they got to be kind of just the the shadow version of the hero you know the hero is the light the villain is the is the shadow and and they duke it out you know and then light perseveres yeah but you're you're right though the size of the rock like who's gonna kick his ass like really <laughs> yeah, no, i know i know that's that's my biggest problem with him i'm never worried for the rock i love the rock don't get me wrong yeah, like, yeah. He's charming he's fun he's he, you know but um as far as like action goes and all that i'm always like eh, he's gonna just throw him he's not gonna die <laughs> let's face it and he's probably not even gonna get hit more than three times <laughs> you know jackie chan you know jackie chan yeah, yeah, definitely. Another, another thing that I think he's a genius about him, you know, he he barely ever wins the fights. I Jackie know. Gets his I know you're asking worried about that. Yes. And so you're like, you're really happy and just like so excited when he does finally win. <laughs> you know, I think that's a that's in general. I think that, that I don't know what happened, but I think in the 2000s, late 2000s, um, yeah, I think the the action heroes just kind of they didn't struggle much anymore. You know, they were kind of they're just kind of perfect. I mean, uh, we're in the superhero age, right? So well, yeah, they, exactly. are, they are pretty non-human and pretty perfect. So it's hard it's hard for me sometimes to relate. You know, true. Like, like you're you're right. We went from the like the the action film craze, like with Arnold and Sylvester Stallone, and yeah. you know guys, guys like like that, and maybe, yeah, and Bruce Willis, and then it jumped to the, the superheroes, Batman and Superman, Spider Man and Flash, and of course Hulk Man and every everyone else. Oh, that guy, that guy. <laughs> but listen, Hawkman gets his ass kicked all the time. He he can't evade a simple knife thrust. He gets stabbed over and over the same way. So uh, he definitely could use some training. Uh. <laughs> so, how, when, when you found out like you were, you were actually going to be part of this universe as, as Hulk, Hulk, man, how did you, how did you act towards that? Like, like how, how did you feel? What did you think that you're going to be part of this huge universe? I'll answer that question. First, I'm going to say you radiate so much joy <laughs> and happiness. It's very infectious. I love it. I don't know. This is a podcast, right? Yeah. So people can't see you, but let me tell you, listeners, this man is sparkling with joy. I love it. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, brother. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was big, right? It's like 
so many things. First of all, I love the character. You know, I had auditioned for that universe many, many, many mm-hmm. times. I've auditioned for uh, Dark, Damien Dark. I've auditioned for Flash. I've auditioned for Oh wow! Arrow. Like every character in there that's a bad guy or or a hero that kind of fits my description, I probably auditioned for. And so there was a bit of like, you know, I got no new tricks, guys. Like, what do you want from <laughs> me? You've seen everything I got. Uh, attitude towards it and so I, then I read the script though and I was like oh this is a cool character like 206 lifetimes the audition pages were really interesting and then also you're putting on a superhero costume at that time for your career that meant you probably made it you you're know, right about gonna, that this is going to take you to places this is going to do everything um and you know he's got wings you get to you know the kid in you lights up you get to do all this cool stuff so that was what I thought and felt when I, when I, you know, got the audition and booked it. Um, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> like, did you ever like read comic book? I mean, I'm sure you have like growing, growing up as a kid, like, did you ever read, read comic books, whether it's Marvel, DC? I didn't, you know, maybe that was a thing in Germany that it wasn't as like, Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Such a, a cultural thing. Um, I did watch Spider Man, the, the show, The Amazing Spider Man, on and off. I did watch the X Men here and there. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I wasn't too. Um, I wasn't too involved in that. I was really into also a lot of the Japanese anime. Like I don't know if you know. Yes, Saber, definitely. Saber, Saber Rider. Oh no, I never heard of that one. Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs, Galaxy Quest, uh, sorry, Galaxy Rangers, um, that kind of stuff. But no, so I wasn't, I wasn't a big uh, superhero buff. Oh, I, wow. I knew of Hawkman, I knew you know the basics, but I, I didn't know too much. Oh, okay. So, so you basically went into playing him like new without like knowing anything about like him or like the universe not much just what i kind of i knew the the you know the reincarnation bit i knew his powers i knew of the relationship to hawk girl and i knew that there was two versions the thanagarian and the uh egyptian one uh and okay. we, focused, we focused on the egyptian one so I, I focused my research on that wow that's awesome mm-hmm. <laughs> and what do you like best about playing him hawk man well i mean oh man i the, i'm very public about this so i'll say this here too to be honest i had a tough time playing him. oh wow really all that excitement i had you know i was very excited about the idea of his past you mm-hmm. know possible flashbacks to like you know in the audition pages that never made the tv show but there was talk about you know, Hawkman wanting to take over leadership of the Wave Rider. And his argument was, I fought a side of Alexander the Great. You know, like, I, I've been through this many lifetimes. Like, what do you yeah. fucking, you know, pure mortals want to do here? Like, I, I'm clearly the leader. Um, so there was this arrogance to it. There was this deep um, jadedness about just sort of like having seen humanity at its worst. <laughs> over and over again having lost his loved one over and over again and also a lot of humor to it you know like yeah he's like well what does dying matter i'm gonna get reborn anyway i'm gonna have to repeat this shit so there was this really fun dynamic that i felt like i didn't really get to do in the show you know the show just didn't have the time and it was i don't think it was anybody's fault it was just there were so many superheroes to cover that's true that to get into that nitty gritty was really difficult. Like I, I felt always a bit rushed. You know, it felt like I had to rush to make the audience care. And I felt pushed to be really tough and cool. Oh. Uh, you know, deep voice. Like a, a note that I got a lot was more gravitas, you know, and then I was way more interested in the vulnerable aspects, you know. Like, I'm like, sure, put me in the costume and let me just show the audience that I can crush some, yeah, some dudes. And quite honestly, with that, too, I, I was hoping that, you know, when I hit somebody with a maze, that they would go flying into 10 other guys. Like, that's how powerful he is, you know. And we didn't really do any of that. 
you know he kind of like you see me punch people and kick people but they kind of take the punch yeah so there was a bit of a there was a bit of a disappointment and then a struggle to still perform and still give the creators and the, the showrunners what they needed. And um, yeah, it was really complicated. It's a complicated answer. Oh, you know, wow. It, it's, I, I still think there's so much to explore with Hawkman that so far, I haven't seen Black Adam yet, but from, from I still what I've heard, seen that either. From what I've heard, they focused, you know, they focused on the powers and all that, but I don't know how much they focused on the the character of God, Hawkman gosh. and his, you know, his feelings and his humanity. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that whoever continues to tell the Hawkman story is going to really di- dive into all that, you know, because it's yeah, uh, definitely. one of the richest superhero characters I think we have out there, you know. Oh, wow. <clears throat> And was there like you you, you got trained of, of of course for like the fighting the stunts and and was there any fight fight scenes you liked best? Ah uh, wow! I mean, I did not get trained. We choreographed. Oh really? Choreography. Yeah, there was no time. I had, I think I had three or four weeks max to get into shape. Oh um, wow! To bulk up and to do my stuff. But I, I've been a fighter most of my life. Like I come from martial arts and dancing oh, awesome. so the whole choreography part was was pretty uh fun and and i, I love doing it um yeah and we had some rehearsals you know uh like a day or so for some of the fight scenes but um again not a lot of time so you know we had to work fast but yeah it was fun sweet sweet i wish i could have done more of it let's put it that way well yeah 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 of course and i saw you you do a ton of shorts like you you've done a lot of short short films like do you what do you prefer more like do you prefer like short films full-length films tv shows i prefer feature uh feature film is what got me to become an actor okay uh, and i love now that i'm a dad too i just i the format of an hour and a half or two hours and getting the full story and getting the full emotional release or you know whatever it is that the movie gives you uh time wise it's just easier <laughs> than to have to binge you know binge a whole tv series um yeah and you also just have more time on set you know on a on a good on a film where you have a budget yeah you, sometimes you don't have to do more than two pages you know two pages of a of a script or three whereas on a tv show i mean we sometimes have to do anywhere from 7 to 10 pages every day oh my um, god that's a lot it is a lot. Yeah, just for people that don't know, like a page usually translates to a minute on screen. Yeah. You know, yeah. G- give or take, depending on whether it's more action heavy or dialogue heavy. And um, yeah, so you just have more time on a film, right? To do, to try different things, have more camera angles, to think things through a bit more, you know, rehearse and really craft the piece, you know, versus a TV show where so you just got to haul ass a little bit, you know? And they do it really well. I mean, like most, a lot of TV nowadays, you're like, wow, this is, you know, this is like a film. Wow. Yeah, because I, I mean, there's like a ton of television shows that I love, love watching. And and you, you, you don't even think like how much time goes into making just this one episode, like yeah. how, how many pages of script, how much time. And, yeah. and, and you, you don't realize that like, a film i mean you're on 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 set for probably like a, a couple months a, a, f- a few months but like like you were saying you only have a page or two compared to like a television show with a lot more more pages yeah 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 to give you an example like a tv show like uh you know legends of tomorrow mm-hmm. we, got, we get eight days you know we get eight days to shoot it and that's around what forty-five minutes to an hour of content. Oh wow! Uh, and so now, then you take even a smaller film like Street Dance that I did, which wasn't massive budget. Uh, we had for the almost for you know twice the amount of content, so an hour and a half. We had six weeks. You know, um, and and then you go to White House Down or any of the big films like Welcome yeah. to Marwin. We you know we were there for three months. Oh wow! You know, for for an hour and a half or two, 
So it's, yeah, it's a lot more, it's a slower pace. Still crazy, but it's a slower pace. Yeah. And you also work not not only in front of the camera, but you also work behind it too. And I see you you do producing and directing and stuff. And what I directed? Okay, so so just Pro- producing. producing and writing. Yeah, and and what what made 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 you want to get involved with actually you know writing and producing? Um, it was necessity and, you know, like in the beginning it was, I wasn't getting any jobs and my dream was to act. So I was like, how do I get to act in a cool film that looks like it was professionally made? And I had some money saved up and I was like, well, fuck it. I'll just make it, you know? So I wrote it, uh, never written anything before. I had no idea what I was doing, but then I found a director who was also a writer who said, Hey, uh, I'd love to do this, but can I rewrite your script? It sucks. Um, oh my god no he didn't say that but he was, he was very, <laughs> well, i was, he was about very, to say that's bold he was, he was very nice about it and that's what he should have said uh, <laughs> but you know he he was kind enough to say hey why don't you rewrite it with me and he kind of like very gently mentored me and then we continue to be writing partners and more importantly you know best best friends um okay. jesse lumen who actually wrote swap me baby the film that is currently out yeah but i gotta plug in a little bit here but um yeah, so I just, we, we made that, I produced that, and I love being able to be in the editing room and to just sort of see how the magic comes together. I love to, s- just to see how the whole cookie is made, you know? And then I continue to do it on the side, always as a goal in mind, I want to produce feature film. Um, and then right at the beginning of the pandemic, I got the opportunity, I found a, a patron of the arts. I call it that instead of an investor because my company um works with patrons meaning people that are willing to support the artists because they love whatever the movie is that we want to make versus the idea of investing and getting a return uh, okay. which leaves which leaves a lot more freedom for the artists to express themselves you know to make a product because they're inspired and not because well here's what the audience wants to see and we got to make money um so i found found one of those guys they do exist um Charlie Teal, I love your brother. He's a he is very well off and somebody that loves his community and loves the arts. He's an artist himself. He's an actor in Swap Me Baby. Um, I think he did a beautiful job in it. And he said, well, you know, what can we make? You know, we didn't have a massive budget, but we had one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. And called my buddy uh, Jesse Lumen up, and I said, what can we write? For this money uh and still make it look like we had we had you know a legit hollywood budget and so we came up with a with a, a body swap story it's called swap me baby about a sort of uptight very organized businesswoman named lily um who has a one-night stand with a french mushroom tripping gigolo <laughs> um, and she gets pregnant by accident this is before the movie starts that's the backstory, and then movie starts in the therapist's office showing like how different they are and um through this magical box that they find on a on a getaway retreat they swap souls so oh wow french gigolo is now actually you know has the soul of lily and that's me so i i play yeah uh, lily's soul trapped in this body and then um the pregnant lady has a french gigolo in it that's tripping on mushrooms um (laughs) And, you know, we like the idea of having an adult version of Freaky Friday, you know, like. Yeah, definitely. That, that, that's what I was thinking of when you were saying let's, that. Let's, let's talk about, you know, sex and let's talk about these adult subject matters of, yeah, what is it like if a dude had to be pregnant? You know, yes. like, how would he deal with that? How would a, you know, a woman deal with being free from the pregnancy for that time and being in this like, you know, jiggle dude? Um and yeah, it was, it was a beautiful experience. And I, I hope people go watch it. You can find it on um, iTunes, Amazon. If you want it for free and you don't mind commercials, you can go to Tubi. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, 50% of whatever we make um, uh, goes to the artists. So our company is very 
uh, intent on having fair wages and including the artists and the profit share and um, you know just setting a really productive and creative environment for for everybody involved oh wow and but while you were you were while you were making the film and was there any any scene you you love filming the most <laughs> yeah i mean this sounds weird but we the sex scene was hilarious you know, like, <laughs> she's pregnant she's really pregnant eight months so that she's pregnant with my son at the time uh -huh. so here's my my beautiful lady heavily pregnant and one of the first days on set we don't know the crew yet really you know i mean i've hired them and i know them but we haven't really hung out and we got to shoot this sex scene where she plays the gigolo so she's the <laughs> horny fuck who's like let's do this i want to fuck myself i can't wait and i play the the you know lily who's who's not so sure about this and who thinks it's a bit weird but she's also kind of into it like it's kind of hot and they're both on drugs so it's a really <laughs> weird scenario um it was just fun to shoot you know it's just really <laughs> silly um and what else did i like i love this scene i can't say too much about this scene but there's a really emotional scene in it um where two characters i, I can't give anything away um, yeah just talk about parenthood and like trying to figure life out you know like there's this idea that you got to figure out how life works before you have kids and it was a really real idea for me. Like I was an artist. Or I am an artist. I'm an actor. And I was like, oh, I need to get my shit together and have lots of money and be really established and successful before I have a kid, you know, and that's just not true. You know, you're never prepared. Uh, I don't know if you have kids. No, no. Well, do you want some? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> well, why not? I mean, um, they are, you know, they're, they're. <laughs> It's it's a challenge, but oh my God, like they change your life and you just, there's in the most beautiful way possible and there's no way to prepare for that. Um, and yet you're always prepared for it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so, so there's a scene that kind of embodies that towards the end of the movie um, that I really, really love. Oh, wow. And... I I always ask guests when I'm talking to them about like whatever's out, like whatever film or TV show they got out. Was there any like cool behind the scenes stories that happened while you were filming? I mean, so many. Uh, for example, the French mushroom tripping gigolo. <laughs> um, I that love that. <laughs> that. So originally his name was Jack, not Philippe. And originally he was kind of just a cool dude. That's literally how boring the description was. Like, it was a cool dude who kind of like didn't care much about life and, and got this lady pregnant. And that was it. And we were getting close to shooting. And it was like a day before or a day and a half before we started shooting. And we were doing the scenes. You know, we were kind of workshopping the scenes with the director, who also this is another fun tidbit. Um, we lost our original director uh, three oh. weeks before shooting. Um. And he had conceptualized the story with us. And so we, we were like, well, what are we going to do? And I called a friend of mine who I had worked with on a short film, Caden Butera, uh, who directed the film. And I said, do you want to jump in? And he, God bless his heart, he did. He jumped in and I think he did a wonderful job. Oh, wow. Um, especially given that he had like no time. But so we were working on the scenes and I was like, it's kind of boring, isn't it? Like, I don't know. When we swap bodies, there's nothing to grab onto. There's nothing, no isms to copy. It's really difficult. And so then we were like, well, what if he has an accent? And I've always wanted to do like a silly French accent. Oh, nice. And I speak a little French and Kim speaks French. So we both can do that. You know, um, and then and then Kim said, you wish you were a gigolo. Why don't you just play a gigolo? You know, and then we were like, yeah, why not? And he probably trips on mushrooms, too. So all these key elements of the film that you that kind of make the film, um, they all happened the night before. And so we ran out and had to get a completely different costume. If you oh watch the God. movie, you know, I'm, I'm in these ridiculous, uh, super colorful shorts, these European short shorts, Crocs and this uh, peach rosa pink colored tank top and i got huge curly locks and a mustache 
Um, yeah, and that all happened the night before. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it would have been a very different movie. So that was <laughs> that was fun, and that kept happening on this entire shoot. There was so really? much really. There was so much. What if we do this? Like, you know, somebody would throw in an idea, and we would go like, "Yeah, great. Why not? Let's try that." It was, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. Oh, nice. Yeah. And where did where did you wind up shooting at? Like, where where was Shot your in location? Oh, okay. Shot in Oregon, Bend, Oregon. At a at a lake resort called Elk Lake, we rented, I think three or four cabins there, you know, to to house the crew, um, and to also shoot in one of the cabins, um, and in and around the nature there. So it's, most of it is set in the cabin and in in the woods, and by the lake. So um, yeah. Oh wow! Nice. And what do you like doing during your free free time when you're not, you know, acting? <laughs> Act, um, well, a couple of things. I've been uh, riding a lot of horses. I uh, love doing that. I, okay. I facilitate, actually. I facilitate breath work and plant medicine work. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's basically, I mean, I guess the best title for it is trauma release facilitator. Oh, um, wow. People come come when they're having a hard time, whether it's depression or also, you know, chronic illnesses, that kind of thing. And I kind of like set up a space and hold a space for them to just kind of work through their things. And I use modalities like breath work and, and uh, traditional plant medicine. Wow, that's, re that's really awesome. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Wow. Yeah, it's, been, it's been very rewarding. It's something I'll probably do for the rest of my life um i do it on donation base so it's not a business i'm trying to yeah put up or anything it's just really something that happened during covid and that i felt called to do and um it's very rewarding and it's yeah, it's it's yeah i cherish it a lot oh wow and that that's something i was always interested in too like plant 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 based stuff like like healing healing stuff and because i always read like all all different kind of things and you know if you're suffering from something like there there's there's something you can take like plant plant based it's not something over the counter that you would buy it like cvs or something you know <laughs> it, dude it comes with an innate intelligence you know and i i do believe there's this the ecosystem that we were put in that we were a part of it's fucking perfectly designed you know mm -hmm. you know that's why like mushrooms for example that are, is becoming more and more mainstream i guess yeah and probably is is uh you know licensed soon i'm sure that you know they'll make a business out of it like they did with cannabis but and cannabis mm -hmm. too if you use it the right way it's there's intelligence to those plants that function with our minds and with our bodies in a way that it can be a, a, an incredible healing um, experience, you know, on, on the psychological level, on the physical level, it just opens up your bandwidth, your consciousness, you know, it expands that and it really helps you if you do it in the right setting. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can get stoned all day long and, and, well, yeah. and get very little healing out of it. Um <laughs> If, if you use it very intentionally and really go, you know what, I'm going to use this as medicine and I'm going to set up a space and I'm going to, you know, meditate with it or whatever you do. Um, and again, I, I probably should say I'm not encouraging anybody to take drugs. Um, but I personally, it, it has changed my life, you know, wow. or something as simple as breathing. And that's also, you know, really up and coming right now breath work you know simple breathing techniques can do absolute wonders in anxiety depression uh, physical ailments it's quite remarkable i oh. i think that's the new way of treating anything that's not a cut or an accident something that needs yeah. immediate medicine to, uh, medical attention but anything chronic anything psychological i feel you know allopathic medicine has kind of just gone really far away from actually healing you know uh yeah for sure putting, putting a band-aid on things and and also just become such a business of course you don't want people to get better 
that's all that's all it is yeah so yeah huge supporter of uh, of that kind of work the the you know the alternative um energetic world i guess okay mm -hmm. that's that's really that's really all i'm 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 definitely gonna look into that like read 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 up on it read more about it because yeah I, what, there's on i'm Netflix, very interested in it there's some crazy documentaries you can watch that are really cool there's uh how to change your mind um then there is just google like ayahuasca documentaries like oh. ayahuasca is a is a plant medicine from the amazon it's oh. sort of like the the you know the sledgehammer of uh plant medicines you know you go deep and you go hard and there there can be a lot of relief release change brought upon and it's traditionally done in the in the rainforest okay uh, with, with shamans that you know sing and that set the space and um yeah and there's I mean, when you watch those documentaries there's people treating uh you know diseases that allopathic medicine has said you got six months mm -hmm. and that's what it is there's nothing to be done here take these pills or you know this and that well uh, yeah exactly all kinds of recoveries from 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 things that the regular um western medicine just kind of gave up on and i and i truly believe is it's because those other approaches like plant medicine um basically you got to do your own healing you got to do your own changing you you you're forced to or you're you're making yourself look at your life mm -hmm. what about my life has led to this disease the idea is that the disease isn't the bad thing it is for you you've gotten it to warn you that you're not living well yeah you're not living the way that you should be living you know you're chasing the job or the money and it's killing you you're with a partner that you know you're like this isn't working but i'm just doing it because i should or i have kids or whatever it's true and these are extreme examples but well, no, i mean that's a trap that a lot of, of 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 people fall into right and so with that work this committed work to being like, i want to change myself i think that's why there's that success why suddenly mm -hmm. the depression goes away or suddenly this chronic disease that you've had for decades suddenly just disappearing because you no longer need it yeah you know when you take a flu you know, we had COVID. Mm -hmm. Our nation has forgotten. You know, like, oh, it knocked me off for two weeks. I'm like, yeah, that's what that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to get two weeks off from your goddamn job. <laughs> yeah, that's You're supposed true. to be toted on and have a chicken soup. And you know what? Our society has failed to make that possible. We're freaking out. We got to go to work. Work, 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 hustle, hustle. Oh, I know. Day quill. And it's like, yeah, guys, like, there's a reason we get sick. It's part of the ecosystem. You're supposed to get sick every now and then, yeah. you know? And we want to, I bet you, I feel like at the moment, if you can tell the world, here's a vaccine, so you don't have to deal with anything anymore, everybody would take it. Oh, of course. Of nobody course. Wants to, you know, nobody wants to deal with any of these things. And nobody sees them as actually very benevolent signs or communications of your body with your spirit, you know? Well, I went off on one on that. So <laughs> there you go. That's that's me on plant medicine. <laughs> nah, uh, that that was really that was really awesome because uh, that I I was always curious uh, about that and and what what you just said is definitely make going to make me look into it more now. It'll be, and I I think it's it's becoming very. We're not far from it being very mainstream. You know, I'm yeah. pretty sure this will be, uh, you know something that unfortunately people want to monetize on and make it a commodity commodity and a, and a you know profitable thing which is oh yeah of course which isn't the point of it but this is one of the things where we, we would say yes do that because it is if it's done right um i think it has the potential to change the world you definitely know? and i don't i i don't i don't want to keep you long. i don't know if you have another interview or not but um <laughs> we got a few more if you have some more questions shoot i got a few more minutes oh okay cool well i wanted to ask you we we are in the halloween season and i'm sure you could tell i'm a horror fan with all the stuff i got yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Art, do you watch any any horror films during Halloween season? Well, I'll tell you, Chucky terrified me as a kid. I think I only saw snippets of it on TV, and it absolutely horrified me. Another one that horrified me, but that kind of like just had a massive impact, was uh, Pet Cemetery. Oh uh, yeah, the, that the was original. Good um which was funny because later on when i got to hollywood as a grown-up i mean i wasn't that grown up but in my 20s my mentor and coach um was the the football player that gets killed on the football field and then oh the yeah board. brad greenquist shout out to him a fantastic actor um you should watch his work he's really really incredible and a uh, incredible friend and mentor um so that was an interesting horror film and connection in my life um event and what else do i love uh well i what i mean i love the conjuring the original those those are really scary those movies yeah scary and good you know they have good, yeah they have they have a nice balance of some humor um especially the first one um, yeah definitely. i love that genre mix of comedy horror like cabin in the woods yeah, um, yeah, Dale Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Yes, yes. Um, Slither or whatever the James Gunn movie was. James Gunn did a movie with Elizabeth Banks, and uh, I think it's Slither. It's these things that these like. I, I think you're right. Yeah, I I that remember movie? that movie when it was out. Yeah, um, love those. You know, I, I love I love horror with comedy i'm not a big fan of like the torture porn well yeah um it's just especially now and i have a kid it's like just to see people suffer like that without any Mm -hmm. comedic relief or like just a a a mystery story or you know uh yeah it doesn't it doesn't quite work for me oh yeah and they're bad just not not my thing (laughs) well yeah exactly and for Halloween this this year, are you dressing up or your kid dressing up? Uh, I'm just gonna put a leather jacket on and go as Carter Hall. Hey, I'm just kidding. Of course, uh, of um, course. Why not? <laughs> you know what? I, I I won't be home in my family. We're my my girl, my boy. They are in uh, um, Florida right now. Oh, okay. So I'm missing Halloween with them. She is huge on Halloween, so she's going to deck him. I think she's got six costumes for it. <laughs> um, and, you know, they're going to do that that whole shebang. So, uh, but no, I don't think I'm going to do Halloween this year. Okay. And what kind of, like, songs do you, like, listening to? What's on your playlist? Um, I am Moana, Let It Go, um, Once Upon a Star. <laughs> just kidding although that said i i did snow shuffle in our first big winter to uh moana soundtrack which is hilarious okay so many ways um what do i listen to i love i mean i'm kind of all over the place from like soundtracks of films um to you know old school 90s Mm r&b hip-hop rap um sometimes metallica billy billy joel queen um i do have a love a lot of love for the 90s yeah late 80s, definitely. Early 90s. definitely and as a dancer you know my my world that i lived in was r&b and hip-hop you know and pop okay. that was um i'm not gonna deny that i was a backstreet boy fan i was a i was in a backstreet boy imitation group get out really yeah, we did gigs. I was Howard Dwayne DeRoe <laughs> with long hair and, you know, spray painted black. Oh, my God. That's awesome. We would tour around in Germany imitating them, like lip syncing and dan- doing their original dance routines. And Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, dude, e- everything. And, yeah, Moana is in there, you know, now that my, my I've got my kid. it's Well, yeah, of course. Singing the Paw Patrol song every day. Um yeah, it's all over the map. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like my favorite choreographer dancer was always Paula Ab Ab oh, Ab. Paula, Paula Abdul. Abdul, yeah. Oh my god, I love Paula. Like that that was like my 
person. Like uh, I, I would watch her music videos, listen. To Remember her the songs. one with Keanu Reeves? Yeah, Rush, Rush. Rush. Yeah, Rush, <laughs> Rush. That was that was good. That those days were amazing, dude. I know, right? I wish I, I was a little older that I could have been around in that time as a dancer. Like that was the heydays, dude. Yes, Janet Jackson. Yup. Michael, um, say what you want about him now, but as an Prince, artist, Prince, Prince never got me that much with the dance. I mean, he's a genius, and I yeah, for some reason he didn't quite grab me. But then, um, yeah, that, that was like late nineties, right? Yeah, definitely. And then too, the fucking boy bands were crazy with, with what they did, like NSYNC, Backstreet, like their shows and their music videos. They spent some real dough on that, you know. Oh, I know. And then it, and then it just kind of stopped. It's just got yeah, me. yeah. Like the the boy the boy band phase was was for a little while, and then it like kind of died out. It was for a while. I think it was like fifteen years. Yeah, yeah. We just went. We actually saw Backstreet in Vegas like three years ago. Oh, get out! Really? And it was it was crazy because all the like you know crazy young girls that were wild about them were now like late thirties, you know. <laughs> And so I, and, and I literally it's like me and a bunch of other boyfriends or husbands who are like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I was the only one that was like, yeah, AJ, you know, I knew all the, I knew all the choreography and I was dancing along with it. Uh, almost ran on stage. Wait, really? No, but, but, uh, you know, in my mind, I was like, yeah, let, let's just do some backup <laughs> dancing for them. Like the good old days. Um, yeah. Oh, that's that was a fun, awesome. It was a fun era. Oh yeah, definitely was yeah. And if you had to choose a karaoke song to sing, which song would it be? Um, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Uh, it's the um, I'll make a man out of you, uh, Disney's Mulan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a good range. I can sing the whole song without completely dying. <laughs> Um, and other than that little mermaid part of your world is always a fun one oh um, yeah okay and surprising for most i did that <laughs> i sang that with ciara renee at a at a karaoke joint in, in vancouver <laughs> nice yeah um <laughs> yeah i haven't done much karaoke to be really honest and for some reason i ended up on disney princess songs so there you go well well, yeah, I mean, you you have a kid, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I didn't have that excuse back then, my friend. I, I wish I did, but for some reason, you know, um, those were my songs. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, um, is, uh, is there anything coming up for you that you want to plug? I mean, I know you're just the new film. You know? new film. Uh, yeah, watch Swap Me Guys on Tubi or iTunes or Amazon um and other than that there is another film coming out next year that we wrap but it's not you know post production is not done it's called right now the word the title is uh recollection it's sort of a an indie um action drama about what if you could erase your trauma so specifically go in and take out the the memory of of your trauma what would that do you know a world where you literally have instead of like an atm you have a machine, like a booth that you go into and you go, hey, you know what? I just had a had a bad lunch with my brother and I don't want to remember it. So let's take it out. You know, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, but the action version of it. Oh, uh, wow. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, it is. It's directed by Caden Gutera, the same same guy who did Swap Me Baby. Uh, a completely different tone, you know, different kind of movie, but um, a lot of fun. Rosalind Luke is the lead in it, young up and coming act actress. That's fantastic. Eric Roberts is in it. For those of you, oh, nice. Remember Eric Roberts? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's coming out sometime next year. You just got to kind of like stay tuned and and uh, other than that, not just riding some horses and doing some doing some breath work with people. Nice and. Mm -hmm lastly like where could fans follow you at fans uh hit me up on at falk henschel at uh on instagram so if you just put my name in on instagram you know, the verified one there's some that like to impersonate it's not me um gotta look for the check mark 
and yeah, that's that's where I'm still active myself quite a bit. Facebook, I you know, I apologize if I'm not active there. I just kind of <laughs> lo- I think I lost my sign and I can't get it back. Oh, uh, same on Instagram. I just haven't logged out, thank God. But I don't know my sign, and then you can't reach anybody at Instagram. So once you're, I know it's crazy. You're out. I mean, you're out. <laughs> oh my God, I know. Like I there there was a couple times where I tried to get in touch with them for something, and and you can't. Like there's no way to con, no way no. to get in touch with them. And the whole the whole like reset your password. It doesn't work when you're verified. <laughs> so once oh you're really? No, no. They're like, oh well, we can't do this on this account. And I'm like, uh, okay, you know, it's like, oh wow. So Instagram, if you if you ever hear this, you got to fix that shit because I've been trying to change my password. Um, oh my god, that's crazy! I didn't I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they really have to get better with their customer service for sure. I know. Any company, I have to say, I got real upset with uh, Starlink. It's so another one, like we had a, a crash, like we had a blackout and the, the Starlink wasn't working anymore. And I love, you know, I love Elon Musk and I like to support what he does. But shit, man, they don't have a number. It's all really? a ticket, help ticket via internet. And I feel like the moment a company is like, fuck talking to people. You know? <laughs> I'm kind of like, eh, I don't like you anymore. You know, I want to, especially fixing the internet. I don't want to go to a coffee store to get a ticket to then go back to the coffee store you know like i mean yeah you have a phone but yeah so i don't know why i went on that rant maybe, <laughs> just, to, maybe just to encourage companies to have better just better people relations exactly you know? exactly Enti- like yes. the idea that everybody's excited about it, about ai yeah it, yeah it just it just makes me not want to be part of society anymore i'm like i got to talk to more machines please i know right one. i know I'm like no, I don't want to press one. I want to say hi. I want to, you know, I want to say, Peter, help me. <laughs> um, that was the most random rant at the end of your podcast. There you go. Thanks for letting me have it. I appreciate you. Yes, of course. And thanks for having me on, dude. I, I That was really nice. I wish you all the best. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. What's your favorite guest? If you could have any guest to, to jump jump on, who do you want? Oh wow! Um, well, I'm a huge fan of Jericho, the wrestler Chris Chris the Jericho. Okay. So I haven't been able to get him. I reached out to his people numerous times and got shut down numerous times. So going, yeah, bro. you keep going and you'll get him one of these days. I, I hey, I'm hoping. I've been trying for a couple of years now. <laughs> Jarek, give the man an interview. <laughs> his name Jarek? No, Chris, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. There's a shout out to Chris Jericho. Give uh, Rocco an interview. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, brother. Wish you all, all right, the best. Buddy. Thank you. Take Have care. a good night, man. <laughs>